Hey guys, it's Martin from Yes I'm a Designer. Let me show you a couple of new things in Photoshop CC 2019. So in this video, I'm going to focus on updated behaviors and things that are happening under the hood. So less visible, but still important to talk about. Now, once again, some of these are great and very useful. Some of them I'm not 100% sure whether it was necessary or not. The general idea from the Photoshop developers was to improve your workflow by getting rid of any unnecessary steps and also making things a bit more simpler for new users. So the first example I wanted to show you is that whenever you are using uh, the free transform tool, now you don't have to hold down the shift key anymore to keep things in proportions. So they reversed the shift keys rule. So let me show you this. If I have this layer selected with the tigers and I use the free transform tool, that's control or command T, we can now do the changes without holding down the shift key. So I can resize it and it's automatically in proportions. And you can notice all my messy selections here when I'm doing that. If I want to change them not in proportions, I have to hold down the shift key for that. Now it works with both images and text layers, but for path or shape layers, you still have to use the original shift for keeping things in proportions. So I don't know why, but they are not doing it consistently, this update, and it can get confusing. So I'm sure some of you will be frustrated, especially those who have already been using Photoshop for decades, are so used to having the shift key used for everything, you will find this confusing and you will have to train yourself to get used to working the other way around. Now, the problem is that I couldn't find a way to disable this. So if I go to the preferences and I look for this option, I was thinking maybe it's under the tools or uh, under general, but I couldn't find it. Again, there might be something hidden away here, but uh, it wasn't clear to find it, or there might not be a place to disable this, which again is a little bit of a problem, I think. So um, the only thing I can think of is when I select the free transform is to turn off the little chain icon there on the top. That way, I would expect it not to keep things in proportions, but even then it's still doing it. So that's again, like not sure why it's doing that. So if I turned off the maintain aspect ratio, I would expect it to start doing deformations or changes not proportionally. So I still have to hold down the shift key to be able to do distortions. I understand that they meant to make it easier to make sure that new users are not messing things up. But if they are doing it, they should think about all of these instances and make sure that the feature is consistent and it's really thought out. So I'm not saying it's a bad direction, but it just needs a little bit more work. Another thing worth mentioning about the free transform tool is that whenever you are doing your transformations, you don't have to press enter anymore or click on the little tick on the top. You can just click away and that will accept the transformation. And it works with the crop tool as well. So if I'm cropping the image, let's just say something like that, I don't have to do anything, just simply click away anywhere or even select another tool and it automatically accepts the crop without asking any unnecessary questions. So once again, this can be useful, but can also be frustrating if you accidentally click away and you still wanted to make changes to your transformation or the crop. Again, not 100% sure about this option. One feature that is definitely an improvement is the fact that when you are using the free transform tool, by default, you are not seeing the little crosshair in the middle anymore. That's the reference point. So it's turned off by default but you can access it from the control bar. And that's the toggle there, the new toggle, with which you can highlight it or hide it. And also notice that it's much more visible than before. So they improved a bit the visual indication of reference points. So that's the reference point in the middle. And by having it turned off by default means that I won't accidentally move it around whenever I'm making changes. It can be useful. So for example, here, if I move it here and I start rotating, I can rotate around that point. And then if I want to set it back to the center point, I can drag it back and it snaps back there. But 
most users most of the time wouldn't use this so to having it off by default is actually a smart idea and this is actually something you can find in the preferences if you go into the tools you will find show reference point when using transform so if you still want to have it on by default you can turn it back on another thing that they've done is to standardize the undo redo shortcuts and even the features so if we go into the edit menu now it doesn't say step backward and forward anymore it's just a normal undo redo so command or control Z now goes back multiple steps in your history while if you want to just toggle the last state which used to be called undo before now you have to use command option Z for that so the function is still there but now it's reversed so you are using the more usual undo shortcut to go back more than one step in history if you go to the edit keyboard shortcuts you can even find a use legacy undo shortcuts option so if i turn that on it will tell me that i will have to restart photoshop to get that but it's again useful to have the option to go back to it if i want to another thing that they introduced is under the window menu workspace lock workspace which makes sure that you won't be able to mess around with the panels accidentally so if i want to drag my layers panel around or anything here in the panels i won't be able to do that i can still move my window around but i can't move any of the panels around i can still open them of course and access them but i won't be able to move them around so it keeps them locked in place I feel like this is great for like a classroom situation where you want students not to mess around with the interface um, but for professionals I'm not 100% sure whether it's going to actually make a difference it's still worth knowing about it but also in case someone locks the workspace you have to know where to find it to unlock it so it's not as obvious where to find that another thing is that you can get back to the start screen much faster now and without closing all your documents by just simply clicking on the little home icon here on the left which takes you back to this dashboard or starting area where you can find all kinds of different things your recent files tutorials and also lightroom photographs if you then want to go back to editing your images you can just click on this icon here so it's almost like a home page on a website that you can get to and go back and forth much faster and easier i don't know how much difference that will make in my workflow or yours but it's good to know that it's there and it is more convenient to get to the home area but there are two more useful updates that you can find in photoshop cc 2019 and one of them is the live blend mode option so if you select the layer and you go to the blend mode drop down and you start moving over them instead of selecting them to be able to see their result now you get a live preview of each of them so you can toggle through all of them very quickly simply by just hovering over them and you will see exactly what you get that is a big improvement in my opinion and it's both useful for new users and more experienced photoshop users because to be honest even to this date i'm not always 100 percent which blend mode would work best in a composition so to have that option and just flick through things very quickly just going to save time and hassle and the other update is that photoshop finally learned to do some basic math so you can add or subtract multiply and divide any number that you have in a text field so when you're doing text entry for example with the free transform tool you know that you can type in details here let's say i rotate this by 35 degrees then if i want to add to that degrees maybe i don't know 20 i can just type it in and it's going to understand what to do if i want to multiply this i can use asterisk and three and that way now we will get three times as much of the original rotation we can also divide this as i said maybe if i want to divide this by four we get fourth of that number that we had before again it's not a groundbreaking improvement but quite useful if you want to do these basic calculations quickly and easily but that's all i wanted to show you about the updated behaviors in photoshop cc 2019 
Let us know in the comment sections what you think of all of this and also what else you are missing or what else Photoshop team should be improving or updating. And also if you want to find out more about what's new in Photoshop Illustrator InDesign CC 2019, make sure to check back on our channel. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.